Welcome back to another action-packed episode of ASCA. Today, we're diving into micromanagement and expansion. We've brought in more villagers, found our first iron-rich cave, hello resources, and kicked off our upgrade from hedge to hardwood. With iron blooms in hand, we leveled up our buildings to the highest tier, forged some awesome iron tools, and crafted a shiny new cuirass. Plus, we expanded the village to fit more buildings and beefed up our defenses. Join us as we juggle resource management, strategic growth, and prep for whatever comes next. We'll also share some pro tips on metallurgy in ASCA, covering how to start producing metal, what's required, and more. This ASCA adventure is heating up, and you won't want to miss it. Let's get into it. After our first invasion, we began expanding the village and transitioning to iron production. It may seem counterintuitive that you need metal to start producing metal, but some enemies drop metal scraps that can be used in place of iron ore. You can either explore and find a cave like we did initially, or go on a hunting spree to loot metal scraps. Caves can be in random places so make sure to explore your land thoroughly. You can mostly outrun your enemies. Just ensure you have food and water reserves when you venture into the wilderness. If you plan to go on a loot hunt, equip yourself with at least a spiked or large club. For cave hunting, bring a few torches, an ax to gather materials for crafting more torches, and a pickaxe to get through the walls. Cave walls don't have interaction hooks, so you don't need to hold any specific button to start hacking the wall. Just use your pickaxe on the wall as if you were attacking an enemy. Watch for the weak points that appear as cracks in the walls. If you hit these cracks with your pickaxe, you may sometimes deal three to four times more damage to the wall, making it easier and faster to grind down. Each ore piece can be smelted into an iron bloom, so load up on those ores. Even better, run back to your village with a sled, load up on ores, and return to build that bloomery. After completing your bloomery, it's time to start producing iron blooms. You can use either metal scraps from looting enemies, or start smelting iron ores if you've already discovered a cave, like us. Important facts about the bloomery. It uses a lot of heat, so ensure your coal to ore slash scrap ratio is correct. The highest efficient ratio is 14 coals to 6 ore scraps, but we recommend keeping it at 15 coals to 5 ore scraps. This way, you produce more iron blooms in a shorter amount of time. Villagers do a great job even with a low blacksmith level and will master the trait quickly. 
there is no dependency for this skill, other than maybe strength. But from what we tested, it's not that important. As it's important to maintain appropriate heat in the bloomery for smooth melting and bloom production, note that bellows have three stages. You want to keep it optimal and always have the first two stages almost full. Don't go higher than two, as that will generate too much heat for efficient smelting. And don't stay too long on the first stage, as that will burn coal without creating enough heat for blooms to form. Try to keep those two stages filled while pumping the bellows. Soon, you'll discover the optimal frequency, and as your or your villagers' skills rise, the process will become easier and blooms will start forming faster. Assuming you've already built a workshop while you're working on making iron blooms, add a metal worker add-on to your workshop and get your villagers started on building it. Metal work will allow you to create iron tools and weapons, improved shields, and advanced armor pieces. If you're like us and already filled your two add-on slots with a carpenter and a weaver, you'll need to build a new workshop. We did just that and added the metal worker add-on to the new workshop. This setup ensures you have all the necessary crafting stations to keep your village well-equipped and ready for any challenges. Now that you have access to good iron tools, make a few more iron wood axes, equip your wood gatherers, and start adding hardwood requests to your wood processing building. The next step is to upgrade as many of your buildings as possible to the top tier, the house. This will allow you to not only store twice as many resources, but also hire an additional villager to work in the building for you. This ensures more efficient resource management and boosts your village's productivity. At some point, as you or your village smiths become more proficient in crafting with iron, you will notice that new items become available. Some of these items will require a smithing skill of 45, while the most advanced ones will need you to reach a skill level of 75. Keep honing your skills and leveling up your smiths to unlock these powerful upgrades and enhance your village's capabilities. Next time in Aska, We'll be hunting big bad enemies and bosses, facing epic challenges and uncovering rare loot. Get ready for some intense battles and awesome adventures. <laughs> <laughs>